Sean here with Wahoo Warrior. Uh, we're going to be doing a 750 point battle report. This is game one of our Eastern Front campaign. It ties into our uh, two part East and West Front combined campaign. Uh, it's going to be me against Alan again. I'm going to be playing Germans this time, and he's going to be playing the Russians. Uh, after his uh, thorough trouncing in the first two games, because uh, all these points do combine together. We, we, although you, we will have a, a Western Front and the Eastern Front champion, so uh, it's not like he has to uh, overall to, 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 to do great. Uh, he's looking for some wins, though, because uh, you know there's a lot of games to go. Ten matches still to play in the entire thing. But just on the Eastern Front, this is going to be uh, fun. I'm going to go over my battle, my uh, army list here real quick. Familiar with our uh, tournament rules, I kind of listed them out in the game one of the Western Front. We are using the Bolt Action Season 2 uh, net rules. So this is the German army. I've got a, uh, this is my veteran squad I took. It's a uh, assault engineer squad. There's a flamethrower and almost all submachine guns except for one rifleman. He's going to be assisting the flamethrower. I have one Panzerfaust in there. And then I have a sniper, regular. And then in our, before we ever set it all up, we're going to be playing kind of a mid-war uh, to end war. And we had added an extra sniper. We both get one. It's a free unit. So since I purchased one, I still get the free one. So I have two regular snipers. And then I have a medium machine gun team, a heavy mortar team, proxy there with a spotter, and a light anti-tank gun. Because I had 50 points and I kind of had debated on my list over and over and kept changing things, kept changing things, and eventually I just printed the damn thing so I'd stop <laughs> fooling with it. So I got a light anti-tank gun. I have a second lieutenant regular with a helper with an assault rifle. I have a regular... Uh, Grenadier squad and these this unit composition they're both the same and they're eight men they have two assault rifles the NCO has assault rifle for a total of three a light machine gun and two Panzer Foss so I think it's a pretty well rounded squad at 750 points you now you can't take everything you want you gotta pick and choose so they're eight man squads with a pretty decent amount of firepower then I have a truck the truck holds 12 people wheeled it's actually a British lorry, but uh, it was, I guess, captured at Dunkirk, and now it's been pressed into German service, at least for this game. And then my uh, last guy there, it's that free model I got with an order from Warlord Games, and it, it's actually, a, looks like a Soviet spotter radio type operator, but uh, he's going to be a German agent today, and he's going to be an air observer. So, I have, I don't have a whole lot of faith and confidence in any type of observer as many ones as I roll although I have to say starting the beginning of the campaign at least my British one didn't bomb myself so hopefully we can continue that streak and this Soviet uh, agent doesn't go back to the Russian side yeah. so Alan everybody remembers Good him morning. Good morning. yeah Alan worked all night and uh, so if I start getting punchy <laughs> you know, don't worry about it yeah we'll, we'll get through yeah we actually meant to have both these games done earlier in the week but with Christmas and we had some snowfall and some other crazy things happen we weren't able to get both games in so we are just a week behind schedule but right. we're getting this game in now so okay my list um, I've got uh, first lieutenant with a uh, additional man um, that's a senior lieutenant in the Russian army, but it's the first lieutenant it adds to uh, the free inexperienced infantry squad. It's green tank hunters. Um, you get all 12, you take everything you can. Uh, medium machine gun, um, a uh, uh, anti tank medium rifle. Medium machine gun with a gun shield? Yes, medium machine gun with a uh, gun shield. That's I love right. That option. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, I started seeing it on the. Uh, um, easy army and I, wait a minute I've got five points I can play with let me see where that was and and uh, yeah it was on the machine gun so there we go um, I got the uh, anti-tank rifle team another anti-tank rifle team it's a special rule for the Russians they can take uh, um, up to three anti-tank teams you know it covers the gambit 
uh, anti-tank rifle, uh, the uh, um, ampulate, uh, the dog miners, but I have uh, just two. Um, I have a, a regular sniper, that's the uh, uh, free sniper, I just couldn't uh, you know, fit two in. Campaign, uh, right, yeah. right. From the special for our campaign, our not campaign. <laughs> exactly. Um, I have a medium howitzer uh, for with a spotter. Okay. Medium um, howitzer with yes, a spotter. Got yes, it. And, with a spotter. Uh, right, and then two units that are uh, nine man units. Each has two uh, light machine guns and uh, NCO. The rest of them are rifles and a uh, um, T thirty four eighty five tank. Yeah. Which medium is, with the uh, um, heavy and a tank gun, which gives it the uh, HE uh, upgrade given the uh, uh, yeah. you know season two bolt action .net rule. Yeah, season the season two rules did a quite a, a bit of uh, bump to those heavy and a tank guns. Right. And all right, so we're going to get into this battle report. Uh, this is being our first match on our. Eastern Front campaign, my Germans versus Russians. Uh, we wanted to set up an urban type uh, setting uh, as if maybe they're kind of going from urban into the countryside. Uh, we roll off and Alan actually picks the non uh, the non city side. So he chose that. And uh, so then I have to deploy and then we roll again or something, I don't remember. But uh, I'm deploying, I have to deploy a, a half my army so I go through my selection and I pick uh, some of my items. And the other half comes in on the first uh, in, or in reserve. So uh, I get a pack army. We're basically playing uh, envelopment, but we're both the attacker because uh, we're you know that that's when it's not really set up for. Uh, some competitive matches where you can basically walk half your army off on reserves and come into the deployment zone and go off the back. Uh, we play you can have uh, outflanking, but the way we, we modified it is any units that start the game in outflanking cannot score deployment zone or going off the board edge points. So. You can still do it and come in an advantageous position and do damage with them, but those units can't score. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, I've got a heavy howitzer on top of that building. I've got my anti tank gun on the other side of that church. Since so we're playing season two rules, things can start in ambush, but uh, there's really no point to it. He's got to deploy his half his army now. So you got to see basically where I got to put my stuff, but uh, then I got things in reserve. I didn't put it because we both have a prep bombardment, since we're both the attacker in this scenario. We do, we're both attacker. Uh, he's got his howitzer down on the close end here. He's got his free and experienced squad in that courtyard there. He's got a sniper in that building. Then he's got a uh, in a tank rifle team down in that uh, wood line. We got the two roads. This road here close to us has a barricade across it, so it's going to stop the wheeled vehicles from coming through. And then that far road does not have any obstruction, but it kind of veers off to the left. Uh, there's a lot of uh, terrain and trees and whatnot along it. So uh, this is my print bombardment I'm doing to Alan. Uh, he's got his heavy machine gun on the other side of that. Uh, farmhouse and that's the only thing it does take a direct hit so he takes one hit loses a guy off of that and takes like three pins and that's just some pin markers he fires his off at me and uh, just puts pins on everybody so since we're both the attacker we both just have a bunch of pins on us and then we start pulling some dice uh, reserves can't come until turn two so I've I have a medium machine gun in the second floor of that building right there. I go ahead and fire at the inexperienced squad. They don't, uh, I, I don't think they have any cover from the second floor window, but Alan was uh, pretty sure they did, so I went ahead and gave him the cover. So, uh, but I rolled pretty poorly. I did clear my pin off, so that's good. In season two, uh, German machine guns, medium machine guns get seven shots. Uh, that's uh, my sniper there. I got my sniper in that 
So we both get a free one, and I also purchased one. So that was a sniper opening up, and he actually missed the inexperienced squad as well. I was just trying to get pins on them. And then my other sniper's on the roof of that building over by the, by the road there. That's his howitzer. He's firing uh, at my medium machine gun. He's fire, he fires that shot direct. I, I had actually kind of thought that that tree line was blocking us, but uh, it's less than two inches there, so then I, I think I do shoot it back at him next turn or two with my medium machine gun after that. Is that medium howitzer is not something you want to get hit by? He takes out my sniper with his sniper. That's a pretty good roll. You know, it's killing things with sniper, hitting things is one thing, putting pins, killing stuff can be another matter completely. He does ignore the building modifier though since he's a sniper, but still it's a, what, 25% chance on a 4 up to hit and 4 to kill, so. This is my uh, air observer who's sitting down in this building. Alan had drove that truck into the little muddy field there and I'm able to spot him. I had to activate because I had two pins on me from the prep bombardment, but I do pass and I put a air observer marker on him. So I'm going to be looking for an airplane to be coming in on that tank. I think this one over here had that tape line. Yep, here comes the airplane. So I roll a successful coming in and stupid dive bomber or some similar aircraft. Actually, I rolled poorly. I rolled a. Uh, I rolled a. Uh, I think I rolled a 2d6 plus 2 one, the lower one, but uh, I got fortunate on the rolls. I only got like four hits, and then out of the four hits, I had plus two penetration, and he's got a seven up on the arm, uh, or normally nine, so it'd be eight on the top, and I roll a six, and I get a glance, and then after my glance, I get on fire, and since he took the, all the pins, uh, he failed his check, and it caught on fire, and the crew bailed out, so he... After I rolled poorly on the plane, I uh, thought I was going to survive, but yeah, that pins from an airplane, yeah, it's almost, I don't know why the target unit gets double dipped like that. All units including it, and then he takes an additional, you know, two or three pins or something. So it's pretty brutal to be the target unit of an aircraft attack. Well, here comes my mini machine. It's turn two now. With my mini machine, I am firing at the Hauser. Uh, long range soft cover. Uh, he's got two pins on that howitzer. So I think he had two from the bombardment. Cleared one when he fired up my meme machine and I put another one back on him. Didn't kill anybody though with the six up gun shield. Here comes his inexperienced squad. Pretty brave. Run up kind of behind this rock. And then he wants to fire some shots at my uh, sniper. I believe, or yeah, because it's only turn two. I haven't moved anybody else in yet. Unless I had moved, a, I do end up moving a squad in the basement of that house there, and I might have already done that. And if he fired at them, but he needed like sevens, inexperienced moving, building, long range. So. At this point in the game, you know. Uh, I'm still not sure what I want to play. Now that the tank is destroyed, it gives me a little more uh, ability to do. I have a truck with uh, the squad and lieutenant in it. Uh, he doesn't really have a whole lot of targets on the far end. He still has a squad stuff, and I believe uh, he moves them in. He does. That's them coming in now. I've got that sniper on the top of that building. He needs like sevens to hit. He gets one, kills a guy, and then he failed my check. So he had two light machine guns in that squad, or no, one light machine gun, but four shots, and uh, he gets lucky and kills a guy. But uh, even needing needing sevens, so uh, so he's got a squad kind of along the side of that road. <coughs> Excuse me, on the far end, and. Uh, I've got uh, two squads of infantry in the city, and I've got a assault engineer squad still in my truck. These are his anti-tank rifles here. He's got anti-tank rifles behind each of those little sandbag things. Uh, 
So, you know, I could be bringing my truck in on the left and drive down that road there. Uh, there's not really a whole lot of reason to use the truck. But then I decide, what the heck, since he's already activated his anti-tank rifles, I've got the last few older guys. I go ahead and bring my truck in. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with my guys. I could advance and fire. They've almost got all submachine guns. Uh, even a run though at this I'm gonna have to run around the hedge and up so I just did an advance and I think I had one rifle so I fired it and I know that kind of forces Alan's hand with his other infantry squad and he does bring him in right here behind this little rock wall by the house uh, they have actually not a horrible shot at me uh, it's just the hedge from that angle not the rock uh, he's able to hit me and kill a guy and so that puts a pin on me you know in these bull dashing games you know having a 10 leadership and one pin it, you still worry about failing that just that one pin causing you to make a check and fail it but I feel pretty confident there still so we start turn three and he pulls the first dice and probably should have concentrated on my assault engineers like I thought he would but uh, these inexperienced guys just come out in the wide open right in front of them uh, right in front of got an infantry squad in the bottom of that house now they can only fire out of two windows but uh, that looks like a suicide mission to me with a medium machine gun in this second floor and then uh, he pulls another dice instead of using his infantry I guess he's probably keeping them to try to figure out where I'm gonna go to make sure he doesn't activate too soon, but he fired an anti-tank rifle truck, trying to knock out the truck, and he uh, missed the first time. And the second anti-tank rifle hits it, knocks it out. And it's an order dice, but the truck did what it was needed to do. It was no longer important. And my assault, I pulled the dice, and I moved my assault engineers around the back side of that woods. So. That flamethrower is going to be creeping up close with all those submachine guns. I bring a squad in. Uh, they had come in on turn two. They were behind that house and they come around the side of the house in an advance order. And they hit those guys in the road who are just kind of coming down the, the side of the road. They don't really have any cover. I don't roll particularly well, but I do kill a few guys and put a pin on. Now we're both kind of standing in the open with uh, facing each other. Uh, my mortars firing at his squad there in the courtyard and I had failed a order check with my squad on the bottom of that house so I had one pin on me and I failed an order check so then here comes my medium machine gun my medium machine gun does let him have some grief for standing out there but I was really on one pin like I was just talking about needing a 8 to pass and I failed so I wasn't able to gun those guys down I have, I've got a, a light machine gun in that squad and three assault rifles, so even though I had two windows, I would have been pouring out ten shots on them, needing threes to hit and threes to kill. Uh, oh, that's my lieutenant. He walked around the side of the house, and he fired a, uh, his attendant has an assault rifle, and he has a rifle, so they're able to put three shots and get another pin on that unit. Uh, oh, he had moved his squad and fired some long range needing seven shot I think on that infantry squad in front of the inexperienced and didn't, didn't even hit so alright so we pulled for turn four and I get the first dice so I let these guys have it kill quite a few uh, he passes his check on his second roll since he's rushing he gets to roll twice so they are alive uh, I advance these guys up uh, and I let those guys have it and at this point I think those guys are just deceased um, because I got the pull and then the pull I roll pretty pretty miserably uh, actually and I do kill a couple and put a pin on but he still has his two light machine guns and two helpers so his squad is down to four guys he returns fire clears a pin off of him 
and he's able to roll really good and kind of turn the tide of that little combat to the point where I was murdering him to uh, not. Nah. Here's his uh, medium howitzer, fires at my mortar, needing a, I think a five now, and not my mortar, my medium machine gun needing a five, and he's actually able to score a hit, and he, uh, he fired indirect, and he rolled a six, so, and then we rolled to see what uh, floor it exploded on, and it hit the floor that they were on, so he wiped out the medium machine gun, which kind of sucks a lot. So now he knows I got an assault squad creeping around the woods with a bunch of submachine guns and a flamethrower. These guys start vacating their positions, and now that the medium machine gun is down, they're able to just start heading up the road because you know you score two points if you get them in the deployment zone and three points if they get off the board. He moves that infantry squad into those woods right there on an advance order. And it's his lieutenant kind of sticking close to him. So uh, I've got my uh, air observer finally was able to clear the rest of the pins off him. And he's working down towards the deployment zone. My mortar try to concede two inches into the woods, so he tries to fire up those guys. Would be nice just to get a couple of pins on them, even if I didn't kill anybody. Here goes my assault engineers. Uh, you know, it's kind of that uh, submachine gun only have a 12 inch range. Uh, I've only got like two guys that can see the howitzer plus the flamethrower. Uh, they are more than enough to destroy that thing. And my flamethrower does not run out of fuel, so that's nice. Uh, but now it's like it's already turned five. You know, it's stay in a position to get off the board or go try to help on the left hand side. Uh, that's that's kind of the little catch. You try to figure out, you know, what we what was going to be more stopping him. Uh, I'd also thought about doing that with my observer was walking into the board and trying to maybe uh, confront a in a tank rifle team with this pistol, but. So now I got a lot of stuff in the center here going on. I think his inexperienced squad fails to activate. There's only a few guys left of them, but uh, he does uh, run his lieutenant over to over to the other side to try to help them activate. And I've got my lieutenant running up the left hand side trying to make sure my squad activates because now that we're almost even in manpower on that road there, uh, failing an activation check would mean your death. So. My assault engineers, go ahead and, um, it's, it's turn five, I figure if I can knock out that anti-tank rifle team, uh, that'd be great, but you know, small team with that uh, rock in the way, wasn't able to do, even score a pin on it. So I'll still have turn six to make sure I'm in the deployment zone, and if it goes to a turn seven, I'll have them run off, but. Uh, Here's my squad in the house there. I go ahead and decide just to finish off the inexperienced squad, and they do. Here, my lieutenant uh, helps those guys pass, and they move on the other side of that hedge. Uh, he does have a heavy machine or medium machine gun on that road, even though it has like three pins on it. He's failed to activate it a few times. It is there, so I make sure it can't see me, and I kind of expose myself to the sniper and his lieutenant and stuff, but the sniper don't care about cover anyway. Here goes a sniper shot, and uh, he uh, kills my NCO, and I fail to replace him, so it's basically you know, a permanent pin. These guys here come up, advance, and uh, this is probably, uh, you know, when I, it's turn five, and uh, he left uh, the majority of his models in the woods for the cover, and he wanted to put some fire on my guys. He's able to uh, kill a couple, but he left his guys in the woods. So turn six, he can't he can't run on a turn six because he can't give a run order to a unit in the rough ground. So uh, he's going to need a turn seven in order to get those guys into my deployment zone. I think he only killed one guy. Here's my observer. Gets clear of the woods, so now he can run next turn. He should get into the deployment zone. And we do start turn six, but I think I forget to flip the dice. 
So, you know, in these games, when it gets into turn four, five, and six, it really starts to, you really start to worry about those order dice. He moves his lieutenant. I kind of thought he'd move over and shoot my squad. He just moves into the middle of the woods. Don't know what he was planning to do there. Uh, li really limited to what the lieutenant can do because he can't run next turn. Uh, he's not in the deployment zone. He didn't shoot anything. Here is anti-tank rifle runs into my deployment zone. I don't have anything there to shoot at. I've got a mortar on the top of the skyscraper there. It's inside my minimum range. Uh, I do have an anti-tank gun here. And it decides to turn and fire at his guys and at the last second he decides to go down that again uh, I'm not sure what if he's, I mean it's an anti light anti-tank gun it doesn't have hardly anything for AG but uh, went down and it saved him actually <laughs> so uh, I rolled a I rolled a six and I needed a seven because I had to turn it in season two rules you can turn an anti-tank gun and fire it with a minus one so there's just about a half inch outside of short range so here's my squad in the house there I go ahead and, and fire at those guys put a pin on them my observer runs up there my assault engineers make sure they're in the deployment zone uh, on the far edge there I was able to pick off his last squad that was in the road with my remaining assault rifles so we go to a turn seven now so we're in turn seven and the, the lieutenant comes over and he's able to kill. I go down, but uh, he's able to kill off my last remaining man or two there with his two submachine guns. This is my lieutenant here. He's firing a sniper at him and he misses, thankfully, because he's in the position to run into the deployment zone. Here's his other anti-tank rifle. I don't really have any shot on those any tank rifles because that building. Here goes my lieutenant running into the deployment zone. And uh, here's his other anti tank rifle, and he's just able to get off the board edge. So, barely had to run around that house, he was able to make it. I do like fire my anti tank gun at some infantry. Here's his basically his last order, guys. He, going to run into my deployment zone and then I remind him that he can't give a run order in the woods so he just decides to fire at these guys and he's able to pick off a guy but that's not nearly enough for a check even though he rolled on this two hits uh, he rolled like oh, a Yahtzee like all these sixes so he gave himself a shot here's some pictures of the battle here's that anti tank gun I was talking about uh, just kind of along the edge I didn't know where he was going to be bringing his tank his turn one when I ran in uh, behind this thing they do take a prep bombardment shot to cut pins and they end up running into that house and pretty much stay in the bottom floor there there's my mortar up on the roof of the skyscraper which ruined his trajectory apparently because he couldn't hit anything here goes the tank comes in on this side here and drives up into the mud there on turn two uh, there's the opening round of the oh he started with his tank on the board actually yeah, I forgot about that and he drives up into the mud on turn two Here's the other side of the board. And here's the angle from this side, a little dead end road. And a tank rifle, and a tank gun, and we've got some stuff there. That's right, that's turn two right before his tank. He's got the token on him, about ready to catch it from an airplane. Here comes my airplane. I am fortunate on the roll. Even though I rolled a poor plane and only four hits, I got that glance. And then I rolled a, a D6 minus three, and I still was able to get a on fire result, which that uh, was disappointing for the Russian tank crew. Uh, you know, in our, in our campaign, you roll on a chart for negative effects after you, if your unit dies. So the more stuff that dies, the worse you can be going through the campaign. There's my brave assault engineers. Uh, those guys probably were underutilized this game. Uh, they were able to kill the howitzer and get off the board but uh, they have a lot of killing power and they, they didn't really focus on anything. He ran away from them once he knew they were, where they were going. There's that squad that kind of went behind this building and they ended up in a street fight with one of his light machine gun squads. Him having two light machine guns 
there they are on the road right before I move out to kind of give them a little bit of an ambush. And when I first moved out and fired, it took, it took quite a bit of damage. I moved again and fired. I thought I had, there's this machine gun nestled back there by that house. And he starts taking a lot of damage, but boy, he had two light machine guns in there. When he fired them back, uh, he was able to uh, score some hits. Here's his inexperienced free squad just getting uh, massacred in the grass out there. And when they went, they failed to activate that turn two. It didn't help them any. And then uh, there's my assault engineers. Here's his squads towards the end moving up into the, to the centers. It's going to take rifle teams running. Here's my deployment zone. Somebody's down with you know three pins on there. Three guys left. Here, see, I still think I have a big advantage. He's only got like what, three guys left, two light machine guns, one firing at minus one. He's able to still knock me down to just the last two guys, but I was able to finish him off. And there's basically the end of the game. So, thanks for watching. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you have any comments, feel free to put them on the board. If you want to see this battle in its entirety, the full battle is uploaded to my video under the same number, uh, full report. Uh, you can also check out our Facebook page at Bolt Action Eastern Nebraska. Thanks for watching.